okay, hey, this is going to be a tutorial on how to unban your PS3 console from PSN Network. So, what I'm going to do really quickly, I'm going to try and demonstrate this while doing this all on screen. I make this look nice at the same time. Uh, where I'm trying to navigate to is the USB stick I have. I have this USB stick. It's formatted to PAT32, which I have my PS3 console ID on. So I'm going to open that up. Continue without scanning. And maybe I'll, I'll show you just what I'm looking at here. I have my uh, USB stick. My PSN patch configuration file. I'm going to edit with Notepad or any text editor. And then I have this console ID here. Install the plugin here. This one I was doing some funny editing, so I'm just going to add some numbers here just so they're valid. That's because last time I, I tried to do this tutorial earlier, and, uh, and clearly it didn't like that, uh, that garbled up hex. Oh, well, that that those numbers that weren't necessarily hex. So I'm going to send you a console ID. I sell console ID for five for five dollars, um, and uh, I'll send you a console ID just like this, and you can use PSN patch in this configuration file to uh, to unban your console. So I'm just going to save this file because it was already in the right place with the right folder, the right file name. It's in the roots of the USB drive the .cfg file. And then you're going to need the latest PSN patch. You can, you can get that probably on my blog or I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, that's it, we're done for this side. I'm going to eject this and remove my USB stick. And we're going to head on over to the PlayStation 3 side. Okay, here we're at step two. I'm going to plug the USB stick into the USB port the further, uh, closest to the uh, Blu-ray drive, closest to the disk drive. Uh, that is designated USB 0. And I'm going to use the program PSN Patch. If you haven't already installed PSN Patch, you know, you can go to the package manager, install package files from the standard package location. It'll be there wherever it is. And um, once it's installed, open PSN patch. I have on screen the band PS3 console ID, so I don't mind showing you. And then there's the one that I was fiddling with on the computer. Obviously, that's not a valid console ID. And uh, I have the, uh, the PS ID as well there. So I'll send you both that PS ID and IDPS. And um, to spoof it, all you have to do is press square. Um, but you, you probably want to disable the custom firmware and exit as well because this is what's going to prevent you from getting banned the next time around. So myself, I use this after I mount my game from Multiman or, or Webman. Actually, Webman may not work. Uh, from Multiman in any case. Uh, I use this, although on my PlayStation the console ID isn't banned, I I um, I spoof it anyways, just so in the event of anything happening, my console ID doesn't get banned. So that's just a it's a good practice I have, just so uh, nothing happens to my the permanent console ID. In any case, um, maybe I should address the question: Why not change the console ID permanently in the console? Uh, I'm just going to press squares to show you that it changes just like that. Why not change it permanently in the console? Maybe in the future, like, Sony's going to just say, hey, it's okay, like, we don't care about the ban anymore. Or maybe there's a way to change it on Sony's server uh, so that it's not banned. Just so, and also maybe there's something important about that console ID. Maybe it could be some kind of encryption to some other detail that maybe we're not familiar with yet about the PlayStation. There's still uh, different things about the PlayStation that we're not... Uh, um, 100% sure of. So, geez, changing or removing your console ID, removing the last remnant of um, your console ID may be a bad idea. At the very least, write it down somewhere if you're going to change it permanently. That's something to consider. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good day.